is up? My name is Catherine, and welcome back to my channel. One of the most common questions I get asked from you guys is, what should I listen to next? Today, I solved that problem. Let's geek out over some of my absolute favorite solo songs in the musical theater canon. Am I saying these in no particular order? Absolutely. Will I inadvertently forget a bunch of my faves and kick myself about it later? You know it. Tell me about some of your favorite Broadway solo songs in the comments down below. Also, huge thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. Skillshare is my absolute favorite, most fun, most affordable way to learn online. Be sure to stick around later so you can learn more about Skillshare and check out a super cool exclusive offer that they created for you guys. So huge thanks to Skillshare for supporting this nerdy content. Let's jump on into the video! Why am I always so aggressive? Okay, you saw this one coming. Being alive from company. I mean, I feel like this video would be incomplete if I didn't mention being alive from company, so I guess I'll just like get it out of the way to begin with. Being alive and company itself were some pieces of art that I did not fully understand until I was older. I have a very distinct memory of seeing a production of Company with my parents and liking it, but not really getting it. Also, there was like surprise full frontal nudity in the production I saw, which um, was very uncomfortable for a teenage cat sitting in between her parents. I don't know why they added it, but they did. And funny enough with being alive, whenever I see someone perform it in concert or in a cabaret, like without the rest of the material of company attached to it, it doesn't do as much for me as it does within the material, which I think could be the case with a lot of songs, but this song in particular, I think it's something that's really best viewed as the finale, as the culmination of the show you've been watching, but for sure, definitely check out Being Alive. This might be an unpopular opinion, or at least not the song you would think of from this show. Let's play a game, okay? The next show I'm gonna say is Jesus Christ Superstar. What do you think the song is? Let me know. Write it right now. Ding, ding, ding. Time is up. It's heaven on their minds. I know that everyone's favorite songs from JC Superstar are like, if I don't know how to love him or get Gethsemane, but I choose heaven on their minds. First off, I think Judas is such a compelling character, especially the way that he's written in Jesus Christ Superstar. I think in a lot of ways, it would have been really easy to just write off Judas as the villain of the show, but especially in heaven on their minds, you can see where he's coming from. He's concerned. He's scared by the fanaticism. It's really more of a critique on mob mentality and celebrity. The recurring electric guitar is where it's at. And I think it's also really fascinating because yes, in Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, Judas is the antagonist. I think it's so interesting that the show kicks off from the antagonist's point of view. In most musicals, we either get to know the protagonist first or we get to know the world in which the musical is set. And you get a little bit of that in Heaven on Their Minds and during the prologue of the show, depending on how it's staged. But I think that's such an interesting way to see the bad guy's point of view first because Judas isn't really meant to be a bad guy and that's why you get to see him first. You get to see the story from his point of view. You get to see what's going on in his mind. Another obvious choice for this video, Daddy's Son from Rat. Ragtime. I feel like I talk about ragtime all the time. I feel like maybe my duty in life is to be a full-time ragtime, good time, hype time girl. This song covers all the bases. It is melodically beautiful. It is intense. The build in it, the emotional and character arc. Audra McDonald. Daddy's son just checks all the boxes. I don't even want to say more about it because I want you to just go listen to it or ideally find a production of Ragtime playing near you. Again, we are so desperately in need of a Ragtime revival. Please make it happen now. I want Haley Kilgore as Sarah. That's what I'm putting out into the universe. Let's make it happen. I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two empty chairs at empty tables from Le Rob and Why God Why from Miss Saigon because I love me an angsty Schoenberg tenor. You know what's really endearing if you haven't listened to it? Listen to Ramin Karimloo's cover of Why God Why but in his Broadway bluegrass series so he's like playing the banjo and singing Why God Why. It's something that I never knew I needed in my life but dang is it great. A show that I am so pumped to see on tour. Let's talk about Aida but more specifically, Easy as Life from Aida. Go deep dive 
on Cynthia Revo's Twitter, she posted herself singing it, but like in parts, I think there are like two or three tweets. The most stunning rendition. You don't know how many times I have tried to go on YouTube to find this particular clip that Cynthia Revo posted, and I'm 99% sure it only exists on Twitter. If I'm wrong, please hit me with that link. Hey Siri, how do you marry a Twitter video? Here is another oddly specific Sondheim song that I really don't love in cabarets or concerts and it really needs to be within context of the show for me to love it. And when it does happen within context of the show, I absolutely lose my mind. Send in the clowns from A Little Night Music. I know how ironic that is. A Little Night Music is so rarely produced and yet this song seemingly is in every single concert. I think what about the song is so heart wrenching and really strikes a chord with me is the specificity in every actor's choices and portrayal of this song. So I think that might be why I like like it so much within the context of the show because we have that context, we know the specificity. I'm a puddle of tears. Billy soliloquy from Carousel. If I could just be like a buff brooding bear tenor for an evening, I would just play Billy Bigelow in Carousel. Like that's what I'm doing. There's a local karaoke bar that everyone who goes sings like Sweet Caroline or Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, but I noticed that they have Billy's soliloquy from Carousel as an option. And I am so nervous slash pumped for the day that I have like one and a half beers and I decide to go on stage and sing all six minutes of Billy's soliloquy. Cause it's really only a matter of when at this point. Now here's a doozy. I know that I want to say something from the last five years, but I really can't pick a favorite. I'm tempted to maybe say Shiks a Goddess. Everything is a perfect solo song from the last five years. I mean, except for next 10 minutes, but don't worry about that. One of the first videos I did here on the internet was in support of Jamie from the last five years. And now that I've like grown up and I don't even know if I had really been on a date at that point. Now I'm very much in the camp of, oh, these are both very flawed humans. There is no winner, but there's also kind of no villain, but still what Jamie did was not great and kind of automatically makes him the jerk. That being said, the last five years is just such an interesting character study on people, how people function as two halves of a whole, and how you kind of just need to accept and love people the way that they are. You can't fall in love with a version of them that doesn't exist and you can't try to wedge them into, you know, a, a hole where they don't fit. Another show that I love desperately and I don't really know which song to mention for this list. Like, I don't know what really fits into this hypothetical playlist I'm creating right now. Where do I go from Hair? There are so many songs that I love in Hair and I have so many thoughts on Hair. Honestly, why I want to do a podcast just so I could like talk about Hair for two and a half hours straight. One of the beautiful things about Hair in my mind is that you have all of this fun craziness, revelry, bright colors, fun costumes, Costumes, and then you have a moment like, where do I go? Where Claude feels so isolated from a tribe. You know, he's supposed to feel so accepted and know what he's doing and feel so carefree. And yet he feels so weighed down by responsibility and indecision. There are so many different ways that you can look at that scene too. The idea that he's bogged down and all of his friends are accepting this beautiful natural way of living. Or you can see Claude growing up and becoming an adult while all of his friends are just running around naked and not even thinking about the repercussions their choices have on their lives and the lives of everyone surrounding them. I love so many of the songs from Hair, like pretty much anything Burger sings or leads is a total bop in my opinion, but Where Do I Go is such a profound specific moment in the show that I feel like, I don't know, people remember that scene for all the wrong reasons, but it's the butts. They remember it for the nudity. But there's so much more going on in that moment. Another song and another show that I have to mention on this list or else who am I? Roll of a Lifetime from Bear, a pop opera. It all fades away from Bridges of Madison County. Jason Robert Brown, I love 
so much of his music, especially Bridges of Madison County. I got to see that on Broadway. Very, very small, tiny baby of a run. Deserved so much better. The orchestrations, the score, the singers, the songs in that show are simply stunning. Some of my absolute favorite of all time. I would recommend listening to all of Bridges of Madison County with like a good speaker system or good headphones or just in your car when you have some time alone to really absorb and enjoy the songs, especially It All Fades Away. Okay, I truly can't decide which one I want to talk about right now. Breathe and everything I know from In the Heights. I've always really related to Nina from In the Heights for a number of reasons. Of course, being like an academically inclined daughter of an immigrant, you kind of get what that is in Breathe. And everything I know is also very oddly specific. I have a very, very close relationship with my grandma who is from Havana, Cuba, just like Abuela Claudia. And I can remember most of my life you know, coming home from school and her making me a snack and sitting down with me and, you know, looking over my math questions. I mean, she was an accountant in Havana, so she was like bomb at math. My grandma and I are still really close and it's just a really, really touching show if you've ever had an older maternal figure like an Abuela Claudia in your life. Okay, y'all can't laugh at me for this one because I'm being dead serious right now. Let it go from Frozen. Or also Monster, I love Monster. Again, with that driving beat, that do or die moment. I really love Frozen as a musical. I think it is so theatrical. I think it was such a natural adaptation for Disney to put it on stage. Again, Elsa is such a complex character and such a, it's such a magnificent, meaty role. Both of those moments are such incredible, cool, strong moments for women on stage. If you haven't checked out Frozen or specifically Monster from Frozen because you're like, do I really need to listen to Frozen. Yes, you really need to listen to Frozen. There are now so many more shows that I'm thinking about that I definitely could have included on this list. If Then, Light in the Piazza, Next to Normal, Legally Blonde, Hades Town, Spring Awakening. Another thing I love to geek out about, Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredibly affordable way to learn. They offer classes that are designed for real life, so they're actually short and bite-sized enough that you can still take them and enjoy them and learn from them even in a busy schedule. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives to cheer you along, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish your goals. One of the classes I'm loving right now is all about productivity and big picture thinking with Greg McEwen. I've been keeping pretty on track with my 2020 productivity goals, and this class helped me big time. One of the major talking points emphasized in this class is the idea that we need to make space for what's important. Whether that be taking time to refocus and recenter your workflow, or creating literal space on your calendar for important work. Taking time to figure out your game plan allows you to work smarter, not harder. If you want to check that out or any of the other incredible classes Skillshare offers, click the link down below. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium memberships to the first 500 subscribers who click my link. After that, it's about $10 a month. Go explore your creativity and go explore Skillshare. Huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Again, tell me about your favorite musical theater solo songs in the comments down below. Also, if you're new here, hit subscribe. Join the musical theater internet cult. If you want more videos, subscribe to my vlog channel. I have been vlogging a ton lately and I can't wait to share those videos with you guys. So be sure to subscribe. I love you guys so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.